Well, here's a video on um, lecture seven of um, gene regulation, LS four two zero three. Um, it's this part. Um, so I've made it up to slide, up to page number of slide number page number um, eleven. Um, so this is it. Well, here um, we're going to learn about eukaryotic transcription. Well, in case of eukaryotic, in case of eukaryotic systems, one structural gene actually yields one monohistonic RNA which yields one protein and multiple RNA polymers are present in nucleus and organelles like um, mitochondria and chloroplasts they have their own RNA polymers which resembles bacteria's RNA polymerase wait a minute why is not why is the slide not working um, so um, well um, this RNA um, so the different types of RNA polymerase. So RNA polymer one actually um, is present in the nuclear. I mean, it is localized in the nuclear region of nuclear region of the nucleus, and it transcribes large um, RNA RNAs, and which includes um, five uh, five point eight S, eighteen S, and twenty eight S, and well, R RNA, RNA polymerase two actually. Um, Yields, I mean, transcribes um, heterogeneous RNA, which um, it, which includes uh, messenger RNA and small RNA, which um, I mean, looks up to, I mean, helps in that um, facilitates or does the um, conversion, I mean, the conversion of pRNA into messenger RNAs, and mRNA controls the expression of different RNAs for the transcription. Well, and there is um, RNA called three. Which um, transcribes 5s RNA and pRNA, and there is their um, RNA poll 4 and 5, which actually are only present in plants, and um, these actually transcribe interfer interference RNA. Well, um, how to um, isolate the different type of RNA polymerases? Well, um, they can be separated out based on um, DEA, Cephatex, chromatography, and how to check the activity? Well, this is checked by um, the information of um, leveled UMP or uridine monophosphate into RNA. And well, how were the particular? I mean, how were the um, activity of particular RNA polymerase is measured? Measured. Um, well, uh, drug or chemical whatever say was used. Uh, it is amanitine. Well, when it was. Um, um, Provided a concentration of 0 0.02 microliter per ml, it inhibited um, the, the activity of RNA poly 1, sorry, RNA poly 2. So, so the RNA profiles, I mean, the RNA, the different types of RNAs produced were actually um, isolated and electric, I mean, run on, our, on electric process. And this said that um, just the ones which are missing, they told that they, those were actually transcribed by RNA poly 2. Well, next. What they did was um, they inhibited um, RNA poly three using twenty microliter per I mean uh, using concentration of alpha manitin of twenty microliter per ml. Well, so after that, those which are missing this time, they learned this that these were RNA poly three. These were produced by RNA poly three, and then um, this RNA poly um, one. Uh, this it was even active when this alpha amenity was at a concentration level of 200 microliter per ml. So, and, uh, the, those particular bands which could be um, seen even at that time were actually that of um, which were transcribed or of those genes which are transcribed of those um, particular yeah, genes which were particularly or of those RNAs which were particularly transcribed by RNA poly 1. Well, now, now the question is how to identify the different the subunits of the different of the compositions of different RNA poly polymerase. Well, what we can do is um, we can attach a particular epitope to the um, to the. I mean, we can attach. I mean, we can attach different primary um, a particular antibody primary antibody against the epitope against the particular epitope of the um, um, the RNA polymerase and use immunoprecipitation techniques using um, agarose bead. Which secondary antibody is attached to precipitate out um, those um, 
those RNA polymerase, and then we can use SDS page to um, to I mean to separate out the different subunits of different sizes. Well, and then discovering I mean how was the subunit of RNA polymerase two discovered? Well, they used um, yeast polymerase two plus um, to which they attached um, certain extra amino acids by I mean adding some nucleotides at the end of the gene. Well, and they labeled these um, polymer subunits using um, methionine, which I mean using label methionine, which was by uh, 35 s 35 sulfur, and then they also um, um, what is it? Um, uh, labeled phosphorylated I mean labeled ATP to um, using um, 32 phosphorus atoms to um, to phosphorylated subunits. Well, and the immunoprecipitation, uh, and then they used immunoprecipitation to um, press to isolate those proteins um, using antibody against that particular epitope which they attached, and then they run it on this space which several other different um, subunits, and this yielded um, um, ten bands. But later on, we got to know that there are actually twelve bands, but um, there we. Initially, we saw 10 bands because um, the sub uh, the subunit 9 and 10, sorry, 9 and 11 were actually almost um, what's it, um, coinciding, co coinciding um, in their sizes. And, and 10 and 12. Well, to remember this, you can remember this in this way that at first those 10 subunits were um, seen and named, so it could they so it was named after 10. Well, after that, they later on learned that 9 also had another one, another subunit, and Ten also had another subunit, so they were named further. So these were ne next named eleven and twelve. So nine and ten, eleven are together, and ten and twelve were together. I mean, of similar sizes, so they could not be distinguished. Well, uh, next we are going to get into um, that um, the gene of the large RNA RNA um, RNA, and actually. These 18s, 5.8s, and 28s are actually yielded from a single transcription unit, which is called, um, I mean, which is 45s pRNA because of its um, 45 unit set, 45 set wide unit of segmentation position, position well, yielded from um, by, um, um, so this is transcribed by obviously Paul one what I said, and here um, it is 45s RNA, and this structure of this gene is. This or the pre RNA is this sort of this, where at first there is 18 S RNA, then there is 5.8 S RNA, and there is 28 S RNA. Well, and um, so that is it, and it actually contains special regions in between them, which are later on removed um, in case of to produce mature RRNA. Well, um, this is RRNA gene. Well, um, what is it? Um, most, um, most of the Promoters, I mean, I'm not saying about our antigens, but other in general, most of the promoters are ETH to facilitate to facilitate the opening um up of the that part of the DNA because it has two added bonds um to have a weaker whatever. And uh, but um the promoter of RNA polymerase one is GC GC rich, and there are actually um two GC rich regions. Well, first it is the core promoter and then there is upstream control element um, and these two regions are um, almost um, 80 to 90 percent identical and these regions actually um, recognized by um, UBF1 and that is upstream binding factor 1 and later, uh, after this UBF1 actually binds it after that SL1 um, binds that As this binds, only then um, RNA polymerase one with the help of um, TIF1A, it can bind this this that part of the DNA. This TIF1A is also known as RRN3. And there are other um, transcription factors which are also needed for polymerase one that are also related to polymerase two. Well, and another thing. Um, um, so here are the, I mean, these are the 
um, G series region to which um, UVF1 binds upstream binding factor 1 and only um, and when this binds this actually makes the configuration of the DNA open and only then um, SL1 can bind to it and when SL1 binds to it um, it actually bends the um, the DNA portion um, I mean this both work together uh, this UBF1 actually along with the help of S1 bends the DNA and then um, along with the help of PIF1A RNA polymerase 1 can bind to this well this is it um, RNA poly um, UBF1 well it is also, it can also be called as a trans activator of poly RNA polymerase 1 and it is a single um, polypeptide it is made up of a single polypeptide or a homodimer and it belongs to a family called HMG high mobility group I don't know what it does it is written that something it is uh, it has some um, affinity or binding to DNA regions or something whatever I don't know and so the, it is it what I said before that um, UVF1 role is actually is this that it um it, it actually binds to um both i mean to almost the, to the whole region of the um, rna to the whole rna region R, rna gene region where um um it, it also binds to the part for which is going to be transcribed that region and upstream to that to the regulatory regions and it keeps the region that region of rna gene open in configuration and what is the other role of UV, I mean UVF1? Well, um, if um, SL1, when SL1 binds to it, it actually bends the DNA around and makes contact with other loop, I mean other, I mean factors, sorry, it means factors, other transcription factors and uh, and one one. Well, um, what is SL1? It is selectivity factor, I don't know what it is. This is just written and I just copied it. Well, and in particular in East it is called four factor, and to I mean its abbreviation is CA. And um, SL1 is actually made up of several polypeptides, um, which includes um, TBP or Tata binding protein. And this is this Tata binding protein. This Tata means that sequence region. I mean, yeah, it is actually required for both for not only for um, RNA1 but it is also required for RNA2 and 3 so this is up to this is what um, is up to page number 11 of lecture 7